What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video we're doing something a little bit different. So today we're going to be exploring the Backsell Manager and the exclusive user area of the Backsell Manager. Now in the past they've done a few videos on the Backsell Manager and links to those videos will be in the description just below this video so check it out if you haven't seen those so far. So some of you have been asking uh, about uh, creating a dedicated tutorial to some of Backsell's uh, features, functions, or workflows and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in today's tutorial. So without any further ado, let's get straight into Backsell. Here we are on the Backsell Manager's website where we're going to access the user area. And in the material sections we can find a very rich knowledge base regarding the Backsell Manager. Here we can find manuals in different languages. Uh, here we have tutorials, helpful add-ins as well as scripts rich base of sample and demo projects that include large-scale projects, infrastructure projects, Archicad and Revit sample projects, and more. Also we have the webinar materials from some of the previous webinars. And finally databases with cost classification of some of the most well-known standards. For this video we will download step-by-step -step workflow guide located in the manual section. And let's see what this step-by-step -step manual contains. We can see that two models are included, one starting blank model and complete model representing the final result that you get after following the lesson in the manual. Then there is a full step-by-step -step manual in form of a PDF file and we have folder with the same manual separated by lessons and chapters. Each lesson contains additional exchange files required for that lesson that user can import in blank project to see how the end result of that lesson should look like. Now we have, uh, we have opened up the step-by-step -step guide. We can see that it's very detailed and extensive with over 350 pages and many illustrations directly from software. Uh, every uh, lesson is divided into small steps and every step is followed with the illustrations so that everyone who is new with this uh, software can easily follow them. If you're planning to uh, learn by the Backsell Manager, this is probably the best document uh, that you can start along with and webinars that Backsell frequently holds. In this video, we will focus on lesson 8, in particular chapters 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, and 8.6. Uh, that talk about creation of zones, uh, methodologies, generating smart schedules, and finally creating uh, of 4D, 5D animation. Before we start with the lesson, I would like to inform you about the series of educational webinars that are announced on the Bexel Manager website. Free webinars will start on September 22nd and they will be held on every Tuesday and Wednesday and they will be based on step-by-step -step guide that we just downloaded. Uh, this is a perfect opportunity to learn the Bexel Manager's basic and advanced features and workflows. I highly recommend to anyone that wants to learn how to use this software to sign up on the Bexel Manager's website and don't miss, up, uh, miss out this unique opportunity. So here we are in the Backsell Manager with now well-known sample model that we use for every uh, demonstration and I will guide you through the main steps required for smart scheduling and those are creations of zone methodologies and creation templates. Our first step is defining zones in order to do what we need to divide building into levels and construction phases. We already have building levels inherited from Revit and to save some, some time uh, we will import the selection sets of construction phases using exchange files provided with this lesson. So uh, we will just use the exchange functionality of Bexel Manager and navigate to chapter 8.3 where we can find the exchange folder. Inside that folder we will find the, uh, this exchange file called construction sequence selection sets. We will click OK on matching sources and then I'll check selection sets and it's done. Now if we check our selection sets, we can see that there this is a new selection set folder that contains four new selection sets, three for each zone of the building and one for exterior areas. Now we are ready to create our zones for construction schedule. We'll go to the schedule tab and we'll click on the zones icon. Let's create zones for construction sequence first. Uh, we will click on the new zone and enter the name of the zone. 
Then we right click anywhere on the screen and we'll choose new item from the drop menu and then linked. In type field, we will select selection sets and we'll check all four selection sets that were previously imported. We'll also check uh, create relations option and then OK. As you can see, construction sequence is created with all finish start relations between them, uh, but we want to rearrange it so that exterior areas are the last in the sequence. So we're just going to delete a relation and move exterior areas as the last position and connect it again with phase three. While we have relation selected, uh, we can check that it's a finish start type with zero lag. And it's done. Uh, we must save this zone and we can move on to create our zone levels. Let's click new zone again and enter the name of our levels zone. Again, we right click on the blank area, choose new item and then linked. Now in the type field, we'll choose the option building stories and we'll check all building levels. We'll check create, uh, create relation option again and then OK. As you can see, level zones are created with all relations and they are properly arranged so that uh, we don't have to do any uh, rearrangements. One more thing that we need to do here uh, is to click here on the parent task and check the option constructive for this zone. And this option lets uh, backward relations between building levels. I'll explain what that means when we talk about methodologies. Now let's save our level zones and close this window so we can move on to creating construction uh, methodology. Methodology represents construction sequence of tasks and the activities and it should be connected with the cost classification that we currently don't have in our project, as you can see. So we are going to import cost classification from exchange file also provided with this lesson. In the exchange folder of chapter 8.3, there is another exchange file called QTO based uh, cost classification that we're going to select. We'll check cost classification and click OK on and our cost is imported. We can see that imported cost classification contains a cost item for all tasks and activities for all groups of works together with quantity formulas and element queries. So now we can create new cost uh, version that we are going to use for our creation of methodology. And we'll do that by auto assigning this cost classification to a uh, new cost version. And what this, uh, what this does is actually uh, binds model elements to cost items uh, of our cost classification. That means that every task or activity in our cost has corresponding model elements that it refers to. Now we're ready to create our methodology. We'll go to the schedule tab and click on the methodology icon. Since we don't have the time to create methodology for all construction works, in this demonstration we will focus only on structural works. So we'll create a new methodology and uh, name it structural works methodology. And uh, similar to zone creation, we will right click on the blank and choose new item option and then linked. We can see that our previously created classification is automatically selected as reference to this uh, methodology. And form of our class classification, we will check only task for structural works and click OK. All selected methodology items now need to be arranged in a logical construction sequence. We'll put site preparation on a first place as it's a logical first step. After that, we'll put structural foundations, then beams. Roofs are last. We'll put the slabs next. And columns and walls we'll put slightly below. Now we'll start connecting these items with relations. By default, start, uh, finish start relations are created, which is OK for this example. Now we're coming to this important point where, our, where we are going to connect the backward relations between columns and walls and uh, beams. Let's select all relations and check copy to children options because we want all relations to transfer to all children tasks. 
Let me try to explain now what these backwards uh, relations are. Uh, if you remember, we enabled level, zone, level zones to be constructive. And we did that so we can make this backwards relations here. Uh, this backwards relations have constructive option checked. And uh, what that means is that after we create walls and columns on current level, uh, we want to uh, create uh, beams on, the, on one level above before we move over to the slab. And construction offset tells us uh, how many levels above we want to offset these activities. Uh, in this case, we uh, want only one level above. Now, if we want uh, a more detailed schedule with activities for concrete works, such as framework, reinforcement, concrete pouring, and concrete finishing, we can define second level of methodology for each methodology item. By double clicking on a methodology item, we'll access its second level. And similar to the first level, we'll define additional activities for structural foundations in this case. Uh, from a cost classification, we'll check all activities related to structural foundations, and we'll simply connect them with start, uh, with finish start relations. We'll also select all relations and uh, check copy to children option. We need to define the second level for all methodology items, even those that don't have defined second level activities like concrete works. Like for example, site preparation on second level, we'll just uh, select the same activity as, as on first level. Now, in order to save some time, I will uh, skip the part where I add second level to all methodology items and uh, just show you the end result. And I'm back with all second levels defined and I'll show you how it looks. As you can see, all concrete works have defined framework, reinforcement, concrete pouring, and concrete uh, finishing. And steel beams are separated from the concrete ones. And similar is all of the uh, other uh, methodology items. And as you can see, we have steel columns separated from the concrete ones. And masonry walls separated from concrete walls. Finally, we can move to the last step required for smart schedule creation, and that is creation template. Creation template function is to combine previously created zones and methodologies in order to make proper schedule structure. We'll create a new template and call it structural works template. Order in which we combine zones and methodologies is important and proper way is that on the first and second level we have our two levels of methodology. So we'll click a new and select reference children based for the type we'll select methodology levels and we'll check our level one methodology. In similar fashion, we'll add second level methodology, except for the last step, we will uh, type uh, level two in the level field. And now after methodology, uh, we will add zone. We will first add level zones under type, we'll choose zone item, and we'll check uh, building levels zone uh, that we've created. Finally, we will add construction sequence zones in the same way. This is a proper order for zones and methodologies in order to get properly structured schedule. Now, when we have all three uh, steps completed, we can finally generate our schedule for structural works. Let's go to the schedule editor and create a new schedule. Let's name it structural works schedule. We can see it has our cost version as reference. Let's make sure that we are in a uh, Gantt chart view. We'll right click on the default task and choose new task and then creation wizard. We will use our creation template that we've previously created. And after we click uh, our schedule, we'll uh, generate in matter of seconds. After we click OK, our schedule will be uh, generated in a matter of seconds. We can pop out schedule so we can see it in full screen. 
And as we can see, all of the tasks are automatically generated with all required relations. We can also check line of balance and we can see it looks okay. All uh, activities are properly scheduled on corresponding levels and zones. One more thing we can notice is that all tasks have default 40 working hour duration. Uh, and we can easily change those durations. Let's click on selection and choose uh, select leaf task. That will choose all leaf tasks uh, of the schedule and while they are selected, we can change their duration to 32 and click apply. Now let's change duration of all concrete pouring tasks to 16 hours. We'll type concrete pouring in the filter and we'll select all concrete pouring tasks. Now let's go to the selection and again select all leaf tasks and change duration to 16 hours. Click apply and that's how we change durations in schedule. The next thing I wanted to show you in this video is how to create a 4D, 5D schedule animation. For that purpose, we will import two exchange files that contain complete construction schedule for all works as well as some helpful selection sets. Those files are in exchange folder of chapter uh, 8.6 and we will import them one by one. Process similar to what we did earlier, it's pretty straightforward so I won't explain it again and I'll do it just quickly. Okay, so now we can see that we have some additional selection sets that we're going to use later. And we can also check complete methodology and how it looks. And as you can see, it's a bit more complex and it contains all activities on the project. We can also check full construction schedule and that is also imported uh, with this exchange files. And if we check schedule, we can see it contains tasks for all works and not only structural. So now to preview animation, we will go to schedule view first. And then we will go to schedule animation tab and click update animation. Then we'll right click on the schedule viewer, viewport and then click on show all. Now we can play our animation. And immediately we can see that the site preparation elements stay in the animation permanently and they shouldn't. Uh, they should be temporarily presented in the animation. So what we can do is to select these elements and locate them in the schedule by clicking selection and then find tasks uh, with elements. Then we right click on selected tasks in schedule and choose task editor. In task editor, in, setting ta in settings tab, we'll change work from automatic to fixed and set it to be temporary. We'll update animation again and when we play it, uh, we can notice that the site preparation elements disappear quickly on start uh, of construction and that's uh, what we wanted to achieve. I would like to slow down animation a bit by increasing its duration. It will, uh, I will increase it slightly to 45 seconds only. Here we can also change interval type. It can be set to hourly, daily, weekly or monthly. I will leave it on daily which is uh, the default setting. Now we can notice one more thing and that is that the terrain and existing objects are missing in the animation and we can also fix that. We will use one of the selection sets that we've imported called existing. It contains terrain as well as existing objects. We'll right click on the viewport and select option neutral schedule elements and then add selected elements. Terrain and existing objects are now displayed and they will stay in the animation permanently. And one last thing that I would like to uh, add is a dynamic camera. In display field I will select animation and I will quickly make a new animation and call it animation 1 for example.
Now I will right click on our new animation and choose option set active. And now we can make our first frame by right clicking on the blank frame list and choose new keyframe. We'll move timeline slider to about quarter of the way and we'll adjust our new camera position. And again we'll add a new keyframe. We'll repeat this process a few more times. Uh, this will be a basic orbiting camera with a few keyframes, just for a quick demonstration. And this will be our last keyframe. One more thing that I notice is that this activity legend that covers half of the screen. We can also fix that quickly. We'll go to schedule legend settings and change uh, width and height of the legend to be fixed. And we'll set the width to be 800 and the height to be 120. We'll also turn off project cost and project uh, completed percentage because we don't have cost information in this project. Now we can finally play our 4D construction animation. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, once again, I want to remind you that if you uh, liked this lesson and would like to learn more about the Bexel Manager workflow, visit a Bexel Manager webpage and sign up for the upcoming free educational webinars. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next tutorial.